everybody, this is Caitlin from the Twinsburg Library, and today we're going to take a virtual vacation to Italy! So we're going to read a book about Italy, and then we are going to do a fun, crafty science thing, and then we're also going to be making a recipe that is kind of, sort of, based on uh, Italy, an Italian recipe. So let's have some fun. All right, so we are going to be reading... <laughs> Living in Italy, and this is by Chloe Perkins, and we want to thank the Simon & Schuster for letting us read it today. So let's learn a little about Italy. Ciao! That means hi in Italian. My name is Pia, and I live in Italy. Italy is a country in Europe where about 60 million people live, including me. Italy is famous for its shape. Doesn't it look like a boot? The boot is kicking Italy's two islands, Sicily and Sardinia. Sicily is home to five million people. It is the biggest island in the Mediterranean Sea. Sardinia is smaller. It has pretty beaches and mountains. I love going on vacation there with my family. Italy is split into 20 regions. Each region has its own government and tradition. For example, in Tuscany, people eat very simple food. But in nearby Emilia Romagna, people eat food with lots of spices and flavors. People in different regions might celebrate different festivals or wear different clothes or listen to different kinds of music. And while some regions are small, many regions have big cities. Venice is a city that was built on the water. People travel in boats instead of cars. Pizza was made first made in the city of Naples. This pizza is called Napole Neapolitan pizza and can only be made using special ingredients. Milan is Italy's fashion capital. Four times a year, Milan has a fashion week for designers to show off new clothes. Florence is a city of art. Many beautiful buildings, sculptures, and paintings can be found there. I live in a city called Foligno in the Umbria region. Foligno is about 100 miles north of Rome, the capital of Italy. I live there with my mom, dad, grandma, and big brother in a yellow house. We have a black dog named Luna. My mom is a professor at university, and my dad works for a museum. My brother is in high school. He loves playing soccer. My grandma lives with us, too. In Italy, many grandparents live with their families. And that's a good thing, too, because each morning, my grandma makes us delicious breakfast. In Italy, we eat sweet things for breakfast, like cookies, bread, and cake. Mmm. After breakfast, my dad drives me to school. There are 15 kids in my class. My teacher checks attendance, and then we start our first subject, history. Italy has a long history. So far, I've learned about the ancient people who lived here before Italy was even a country. People like the Etruscans, who built cities around 700 BCE. The Etruscans were great sailors, craftspeople, and warriors. But history gets really interesting in 509 BCE. That's when people, people in the city of Rome overthrew their king and later defeated the Etruscans. This led to a new era, the Roman Empire. Rome built up its army and defeated many nations. At its height, the Roman Empire was so big, it stretched from England to Africa. Rome was defeated by barbarians in 476 CE. After Rome fell, the land was split into two city-states, which were like tiny countries. Bigger countries fought over these city-states in the hundreds of years that followed. In the late 1700s, France defeated many city-states and brought them together. The French passed along new ideas about being loyal to your country. When the French left in 1814, their ideas stayed. Italians wanted to unite their country. In 1861, the country of Italy was born. By 1871, all the regions we know today had become part of Italy. That's what we have learned so far. After the lesson, I put away my history book and walked to music class. Music is very important in Italy. Italy is the birthplace of opera, the violin, and piano. Even musical notation, the way we write music, came from Italy. Olivia and Sophia are my best friends in school. We all play violin in music class. When I grow up, I want to be the best violin player in Italy. After music comes science class. Today we are learning about how plants grow. Many famous scientists and inventors came from Italy. Italians are credited with, credited with inventing the radio, batteries, and even eyeglasses. 
On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, school lasts until 4.30. I take classes like math, reading, art, English, and computers. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, school ends at lunchtime. Since today is Tuesday, I get to go home now. At home, my grandma cooks lunch. Sometimes we'll eat a sandwich or cook fish with vegetables. Today, we're eating a crunchy salad with chicken. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I take violin lessons with our neighbor. So I practice every day so I can get better. When my brother gets home from soccer or practice at his sports club, he helps me with my homework. When we're done, we play a quick game of soccer. It's time for dinner. In Italy, it's very important to eat one meal a day with your family. Often we eat pasta and meat that's cooked in a creamy sauce. As we eat, we take turns talking about our day. After dinner, I get ready for bed. On my bedroom wall, I have a big map. I put a pushpin in each country I want to visit. Would you like to visit Italy someday? There are so many places in the world to see. The end. Did you guys learn some cool stuff? I know I did. So one of the cool things, we talked about Venice. Well, they use boats instead of cars to get around. And I thought it would be fun for us to make a paper boat that will actually float. You guys ready? So all you need for this uh, craft experiment is a piece of paper and some scissors. Unless you have a square piece of paper, then you don't need it. Because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this rectangle into a square. So all we have to do is you're going to fold up one side so that a short side meets the long side. And we're going to make, so we're going to kind of make a pointed over here and crease it. So you'll see we got a little bit of this long edge over here that's left. So we're going to cut that up. So we're just going to follow that line and snip it off. So we're left with a square. Like that. And then we open up our triangle and we have a perfect square. All right. Now we're going to make our boat. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half this way. All right. And make sure we make nice, clear, crisp edges. Like that. And then we have to open that back up. Like that. And we're going to fold it the other way. So we're going to have a big plus sign in the center. So we're going to turn it this way. And do the same thing again. Make sure we get a nice crease. And then we're going to open it up. All right, you guys see the plus sign? We've got the line going this way and the line going that way. Now, we're going to take each of these edges and we're going to fold it towards the center. So we're going to go like this. And fold towards the center. And make our crease like that. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side so that the edges are touching. And like that. See it? All right, now every corner, we're going to use this corner, that corner, that corner, and that corner. We're going to fold into a triangle just towards the center. So I'll do this one. You can see, just towards that center line. And we're going to do all four. So we got one, two, Two, three, four. So now your shape's going to look like that. Now we're going to do a similar thing, and we're going to fold another corner, all the corners again. But we're going to fold from the very edge to the center line, if you guys can see that center crease. So I'm going to start there, and I'm going to fold over. To the edge. So it's not going to go all the way to the center. It's going to kind of kind of look like that. See how it goes from that line to all the way to the edge. And we're going to do that to all four corners. Again, there's lots of folding in corners for this. All right. We've got two. We've got three. And last but not least, ready? Four. We're going to crease that down really, really good. So it looks like a giant diamond. All right, almost there. We're going to fold down these top and bottom points towards that center line. And there's a lot of paper in between there, so it's going to be a little bit hard to crease it, but I bet you're strong and you can do it. So push it down really, really hard. Do the same thing on the other side. Alright, towards the center. Whoop. There we 
go. All right, now comes the hard part. You guys think you can do it? I think you can. All right, so what we're gonna do is you see there's like a little pocket all the way inside. You see it as from the very first folds we did? Now we're gonna turn this boat inside out. So what we're gonna do, as I'll show you, we're gonna start and push this corner towards the center. So we're gonna actually open that. You see it's open. And then I'm going to take that corner and slowly, it's gonna get all crinkly. I'm gonna push it inside out like that. I'm gonna do the same thing to this corner right there. I'm gonna take that corner, push it inside out very carefully. And you can see we're starting to get bolt light. And we're gonna do the other corners. So here's my little pocket. We're gonna push that corner in. And the last corner on this side, we're going to push that corner. All right, and then you just pull. And by golly, look at that. We have a boat, what we're going to call a gondola. And we can see that's what a gondola really looks like. So it kind of looks the same. If you want, you guys can decorate it because they always have fancy designs. If you want to add your little flag at this end. And this is what's really cool about this paper boat is that it actually floats. So what you guys can do if you want to go in your bathtub or like I have, I've got a big bowl of water here. And you can take your boat and you see it floats. And what's really cool is you can see how many things you can get to float on it before your boat sinks. So you can put little Lego guys to fly in your boat. So let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five. It's still floating. How many can you fit in? Just let us know. All right, well, all that boat making has made me pretty thirsty. We're gonna make a special drink. We're gonna make a cappuccino. Now, a cappuccino looks like that. Now, the problem with a cappuccino is that it has coffee in it. Coffee is not really good for kids. So we're going to make a kidachino that you guys can have using chocolate milk. And I love chocolate milk. So let's have some fun. All you need for this recipe is, really, you can do this without chocolate milk if you just want to make steamed milk. Do that too. You just need some milk. And if you want chocolate, you can use chocolate syrup or Ovaltine or whatever you have lying around. And then I'm going to use some sprinkles and some hot chocolate mix just for a little bit of decoration. So the main thing that a cappuccino has, you can see that it has that white foam on top. Let's well, steam foam milk in a lot of places, like if you go to Starbucks, they use a milk frother. Well, Miss Helen does not have a milk frother, so I'm gonna do it without it. So what we're gonna do is you also need a jar with a lid. What we're gonna do is you're gonna take a little bit of milk, you're gonna pour it in your jar. Now you're only gonna wanna put maybe a third to a half of a cup in here because it's going to expand when we shake it. So you're gonna put it on your lid, and now here comes the fun part. We get to shake it. And you're gonna shake it a lot. Now you're gonna shake it for about 30 seconds to a full minute. So in order, we're gonna do it only 30 seconds on the video because I don't want you to sit and watch me. So I figured we could maybe learn something while we're doing it, and I'm gonna teach you guys how to count to 10 in Italian. Now, I don't really speak Italian, so my pronunciation may not be 100%, but I'm sure you can find it on the internet. So you guys ready? Let's count to 10 three times. Ready? We're gonna say uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nueve, dieci. Think we can do it again? All right, let's keep going. Ready? Uno, due, tre, Quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nueve, dieci. Ready? One more time. Ready? We're going to keep going. Shake as much as you can. Ready? Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nueve, dieci. All right. As you can see, we got super fluffy. All right. And then we're going to use our microwave to heat it up and make it really, really hot. Well, not really, really hot. It doesn't need to be that warm. But you can see that it is all full of bubbles. Makes it super awesome. So I'm going to put it in here for about 30 seconds. I'm going to shut this off so I can do that. 
All right, and then while that's going, I'm gonna make some chocolate milk. Now, a cappuccino is usually served in a clear glass, but you can use whatever glass you want, but it's kind of nice to be able to see the cool lines. We're gonna put a little bit of milk, and I'm gonna make mine chocolate, so I'm gonna add a lot of chocolate. Let's see. Now, if you guys want, you can make this hot chocolate, like coffee would be hot. Normally, this would be coffee or espresso, but I'm just gonna make mine. And I'm gonna make it super, super chocolatey, more chocolatey than you would probably normally drink because the steamed milk is going to make it warmer. All right. So I'm gonna use the steamed milk will water it down a little bit. So now I'm gonna shake my milk up one more time. 30 seconds doesn't make it too bad. I'm gonna heat that up too so I have nice warm milk. All right. I'm gonna shake it more so we get extra frothy. Ready? And you want to make sure you take the lid off when you microwave it because we really don't want to put metal in the microwave. It's not good. It'll hurt your microwave. All right, well, that's heating. And then we're going to have a delicious fake cappuccino or a kidachino. All right, I think it's extra frothy. All right, so now I've got my chocolate hot chocolate. And I'm going to take my frothy milk that we shook up a lot. We're going to pour that right on top, nice and slow, so that way you can still see a little bit of the line. I'm going to take it up here. I'll show you guys. You can still see the line from the foam and the hot chocolate. Now to make it super extra special, sometimes Italians will you put cinnamon or chocolate dusting on top. So I'm going to take a little bit of chocolate, uh, hot chocolate mix and dust that on top, make it look fancy. And then, of course, to make it extra fancy, I can't say no to sprinkles, just a few. And by golly, look at that. I have a very fancy Kittuccino. I hope you guys like it and had fun on our virtual vacation. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.